sure. Third time's the charm. Maybe. Oh my god, they're actually starting. <laughs> Alright, so important right out the gate here is I'm curious to see how they're going to pull all this trash because there is that kind of uh, mini boss to the left that's currently RPing with some other trash. They actually just go ahead and pull him right away. He's really dangerous. Already have a death out on Raider.io. He just does so much damage. Yeah, it's not fortified, but these mobs still hit really hard and there's a lot to pay attention to. Yeah, so we are going to see that early death come out, but it, it doesn't have as much consequence as the death will later in the dungeon because you can just, you know, you can just release and you're right back in the action on the trash. It looks like those fell explosives were about to go off there. They do manage to get it down though, and it looks like they're going to be able to take down the mini boss as well. It's going to be a considerable amount of percentage onto the board for them. Team Big Pull though, it looks like they have the stronger pull to start things off. Yeah. And I mean, death up on both sides. So we're actually going to have a uh, stealth here already from Raider.io. I was actually just about to say this dungeon, like some of uh, the other dungeons, for instance, Volt of the Wardens, is very heavily front loaded with trash. So it's interesting to see them skip because ultimately you can't skip that much in the dungeon. There are a few options with some of the packs you can skip. So I'm going to be curious to see what they opt to kill later on. Yeah, and they're still stealthing on through. They managed to just skip pretty much everything here. And I don't think that necessarily, like, th this trash isn't the most dangerous per se but if you can skip it uh, and and get uh, some bigger pulls going on later it, it could work out quite well now team big pull uh, going to be they're, they're not even standing inside of that that little buff yeah that's kind of weird because that green bubble is really important right rich i mean it, it gives that 50 percent haste buff similar to the one in arcway the reason it's green is because it's infused with fell energy of course so it does just a bit of extra damage while you're sitting in it but nothing too dangerous um it looks like raider.io has actually opted to pull some of the traps that they skipped into one bigger pull at the end and they too are kind of slowly kiting away from those green orbs which is just a ton of damage lost yeah it, and i mean that that was the mechanic that we were talking about why the other team brought the yeah. warlock so they could just br move that around with them throughout the entire duration of the dungeon so different strategy coming out here from the eu and one of the other questions and i, I mean you you know the answer to this better than anyone being oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. it, it like it when it's teaming and you start to skip a lot of this trash, it, it can get difficult to actually keep track of percentage. It, it can if, um, you know, you're not sober and you're at home and you're playing with a pug, but I'd assume that these guys have very heavily played and practiced these dungeons, so they know exactly what they want to pull. So I would assume that by the time they get to the end, they've kind of perfectly pulled out the That's trash. That's the only way that I actually ever do cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I can get through. Um, so both teams, <coughs> excuse me, now moving towards uh, the end of the trash here. Again, they're just not standing in that green bubble. I, I'm really curious as to why, or maybe they just don't know. It's definitely not too excessive damage, unless it's been randomly buffed, and I didn't know about it right now. You know, it's usually a good idea to kind of kite those mobs back towards the green bubble, uh, bubble just a bit so that melee can be hitting them, even if it's in the front, so you don't want to buff those mobs. But it's just a ton of time. <laughs> That'd be really funny if they nerfed it because of the warlock thing. Oh. I'm just sitting here asking for it. It doesn't even buff your haste yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it just does damage. It's like, hey, that was bad. Let's get rid of that. Uh, jumping back on board, though, with Team Big Pool. They're just finishing up their supper here with these doggies. And uh oh. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It's just Raider.io. Looks like they kind of clipped one of the packs running up. We almost had their uh, Druid go down on the side. Uh, they managed to clean it up just in time. The DK had to kind of turn around real quick and drop a D&D &D up, and they opted to then pull the tree there that is usually patrolling between the two packs, so they're going to have to kill that. Probably a bit of time lost. Hopefully they can kind of recalculate in their head what trash they can skip further on because that certainly looked unintended. Yeah, that's what I like, though, about... You could tell that it was definitely a mistake, but then they, they kind of turn it into a positive, and they're like, all right, let's just get some percentage onto the board. Board. Let's make this pool a little bit more efficient. Just grabbing some more stuff there that they knew that they could handle with this out. With, this isn't fortified. It isn't tyrannical. And now we will see that Raider IO is going to be doing these f few last pulls before they actually do get to their first boss. Yeah, they're being pretty aggressive up there. And I mean, Team Big pulled not too far behind. They were about two percent trash differential, even with the accidental pull that Raider IO did. So they're pretty neck and neck here. They're going to have to start clearing this trash uh, upstairs because, of course, with this first boss, he does spawn some flower adds on the side that in turn can spawn some of those explosive orbs so both teams will likely be opting to pull the boss close to the back of the room although they do have blood decays and they might just kind of sit central and use the aoe grip then instead yeah ad management going to be absolutely crucial even without oh, the getting that three percent health 
Procs the, Pur <laughs> Procs the Purgatory now. He's just so low, they can't catch up on the healing. I feel like a lot of these EU Death Knights have been running Purgatory as well. This is so, it, It's really weird to see. This is like a different Raider IO all of a sudden. They just There's a bit of sloppiness. They're dropping pretty low. They have three deaths already. It's not the same team we just saw in the semifinals. Maybe they've never run Cathedral of Eternal Night. They didn't even know it was a dungeon. <laughs> it's like, wait, where are we? <laughs> Uh, so Raider.io moving up to the last pack prior to uh, uh, getting on Agronox, which of course is the first boss in here, another resident tree boss. Uh, a lot of guilds, or a lot of teams rather, have trouble facing him. They're usually ki uh, quite stumped with some of the strats. But of course, we do have Thorla Fuzz go down, Tarkum go down too. We're going to have a full wipe here. They're kind of kiting those lashers, which do so, so much damage away, trying to kill them off right now. Muscle Bra getting really low too. Those choking vines are going to start destroying some of those players. It looks like we might have a full wipe coming out of Raider.io. This is exactly what you were getting at, too. Like, this is a different Raider IO. We're talking about them being one of the most dominant teams, and, and all of a sudden, it's like they're just banging their head against a tree. You know, there could be a, a strategic point to make here based on seeding, but I don't think it would get to that extent. I mean, it looks like they're straight up struggling with some of the mechanics. Yeah, I mean, they, but I, do they even know who they would be playing? Like, like know. that's the question. Like, it's, it's, it's like a little bit tricky to actually say that. So, uh, Tre Trekkie's not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I need you both. Like, I'm just gonna dip in. You guys both need to stop. This is just egregious. Oh, was man. seating seating was a reference? Okay, to the bracket, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, well, please, I don't make puns. The seating was to the bracket, not this tree boss. So they do uh, go out on a limb and pull the boss instead of going. <laughs> instead of doing anything else. Um, now, important to note about this boss is that he does have an increasing damage aura throughout the fight. So without Tyrannical, it's not too scary, but you have to deal with them. And as we alluded to earlier, he does spawn some Lasher, some of those flowers on the side, which in turn can spawn explosives. So we saw explosives <gasps> in the back, and we're going to have one of them go off right now. And that's going to be a wipe for sure for Big Pull. Uh, looks like they just couldn't handle it. Uh, and Raider.io is still working on Agronox now after having their, pull, uh, their wipe earlier. Excuse me. Just really got out of hand there, and that's the thing with uh, th this boss in particular. You're going to have a lot of those explosives to deal with with the way that this key does actually work. Now, Raider IO has already slipped up in this dungeon, so Team Big Pool not too far behind at this point. If they can run back here quickly, but it looks like they're going to have a bat. Uh, just trying to annoy them a little bit here. They're going to keep that with them for now. That that actually spawned an explosive. I was curious if they still had DPS there to take it down. They're going to be able to take down that screecher, though, in no time. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that they came close to that aggro. There's just a bit more time lost, and the run back here is so, so punishing if you do wipe on this first boss prior to getting the checkpoint after killing this first boss. Uh, Agronox being handled relatively well by Raider.io at the moment. They've dealt with uh, the ad waves. Of course, you do have to watch out for the succulent lasher under the boss there. It's about to go down. That is a separate ad that the boss summons. Hits the tank very very hard and does an AOE nature explosion that you have to avoid. Yeah, and they're just trying to get as much damage done here as possible. They really want to leaf this room as quick as possible. They've been here for quite some time. What's wrong? Bro? Rob, stop looking at me like that, man. I'm trying to do my job. So, <laughs> Agronox also has a quick, uh, huge hit on the tank. With Orlifuzz, as we saw, he just got punted in the air there. A bit of fall damage, usually, if I'm not mistaken, but the, the main uh, part is just the huge hit. Tanks have to be wary of that to make sure that they don't take too much damage, especially in a tyrannical setting, which, of course, this isn't. But just for any future players for this uh, encounter, it does quit, hit quite hard. Tarkum going down again just at the end. He ate one of those succulent lashers AoE. I don't think they actually have any battle reses available to them at the moment. And also, you probably wouldn't really want to use it at that moment with only 1% left no, on the yeah, boss. You, know, you just want to get him up after that is done. Now, Team Big Pool uh, making their way through some trash right now. Raider IO. Uh, th this just goes to show, though, how horrendous these bosses really are when they imagine them on Tyrannical. We're seeing, like, team wipes come out right now to the first boss. And, like, I would argue that Thrash Bite's probably even more difficult as far as mechanics go like you see a, a lot of wipes go down there uh this is not an easy dungeon no not at all it's really punishing too with wipes with the run back i mean team big pull is just getting back to the boss i mean they've been lumbering around for a while with him meanwhile raider.io moving up towards the second boss room opting to pull all of the imps on the side there um Pretty easy with a Blood Decay, of course, because of the way you grip. These imps are similar to the ones in Court of Stars, of course, that do cast uh, random fire bolts, but it is concentrated on their primary target, so as long as the 
tank knows that and pops an appropriate CD, he, uh, they are ready for the damage. Yeah, I mean, this really is rough for Team Big Pull. I mean, they just logged back in to actually do this dungeon, and it has just been a tough one. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. So they're still working on Agronox. Another couple of devs on Team Big Pull. Uh, we did just see another res go up. Raider.io struggling. One of those explosives goes off. There's just so many ads here that they have to CC. And of course, with Gazerax, that mini boss in the middle there, you do have to turn around when he casts one of his blind abilities. Otherwise, you will be disoriented. And afterwards, there is very heavy raid uh, party damage Excuse me, going on uh, in the meantime, of course, there's still imps you have to interrupt, and those are quite important. And, and the, also, all of that's just going to funnel into those explosives, and, and we actually did see one of them go off there, and it was close. It almost actually caused uh, at least one DPS to go down, but now, with just the mini boss left back up, Raider IO should be able to stabilize here and continue about their trash. Team Big Pool, on the other hand, looks like they are... They, they're getting some serious damage done on the boss finally here. Should be able to get it down relatively soon, but we're going to have to keep their eye, our eyes on them as Raider IO is about to jump in onto Thrash Bite. Yeah, the, the Team Fake Bull's working really slowly on that boss. I mean, that I, I'm not sure that percentage is barely going down. I'm not, it, maybe that's some struggles with the ads killing them off. Raider.io uh, indeed is killing the last Thrash Bite prior to the second boss, Thrash Bite, which is, um, he doesn't have as much health on average uh, in this dungeon compared to some of the other bosses, but he just hits like a truck. And of course, he has, his main mechanic is that charge ability where he will fixate one of the players, and you can either intercept it with an immunity, or they can they can immunity it off, or you have to run behind one of these bookcases, and he will then run into the bookcase instead of you. But the trade-off, of course, is then he will spawn two tome, uh, two tome, two books that you will have to deal with. Yeah, and, and those books are also really difficult to deal with. And we were talking about Big Pull not necessarily moving through the boss as quickly as possible. In the last few seconds there, they actually lose a DPS as well. Yeah, I mean, that's just so like just so sloppy performance from both teams, honestly. I wasn't expecting it, especially from Raider.io and the performance they had recently. Nonetheless, they do move through Thrash Bite. They're just chewing through his health so quickly, of course, without Tyrannical. Just not so much health on this boss compared to some other ones. Make sure they move out of this AoE, which will one-shot, but still does residual damage outside of uh, the central area. I will say the one thing is, is with Raider.io and Team Big Pool playing this sloppy, when the NA teams start to assess and be like, okay, these are the splits that we need to be able to beat them, it's going to be hard to judge. I, I mean, it's tough to say, you know, we were talking with Rob earlier too. At this point, there's not as much on the line. Both of these teams are qualified, so perhaps they're trying more reckless pulls and trying a few things right now because ultimately maybe they feel like it really won't cost them as much. Yeah, but at the same time, like, they can just practice after, too. Like, it's it's not like this is their last time to practice. I don't think you want to do it on the tournament stage. And uh, the seeding, in theory, should be worth quite a lot. You're going to see that. Ooh, that was uh, close. So this pull after the second boss is a bit... Uh, tricky, so to speak, because there is a, kind of a pool of mobs, like 20 mobs there. About f everything but five of these uh, trash monsters do actually run off into a portal, so you can only deal with these five. But the reason they line of sighted them around the corner is because as they're running over to you, plus all those extra ones can spawn these explosives. So you can indeed actually line of sight explosives. You don't have to always kill them if you intelligently play them around corners. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that uh, quite a bit. As you can see, there they just moved past that, that first star hot tub. Uh, I think that's what they are. I've never actually been able to figure that's it out. That's exactly what they are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like random mobs always chilling <laughs> in the, the hot tub. That's one thing that I did notice about Cathedral of Night early on, but now they are going to get up to that orb caster. This this boss can get out of hand. Uh, this little mini boss can get out of hand quite often. Yeah, there's a lot of... Well, I, I'm glad that they moved into the room. I was just about to comment that on either side of the entrance there, there's two little spiders that kind of patrol around, and it's very easy to accidentally pick them up. So it's good that they moved into the room and avoided them right away. They just did so, so much damage. The warrior and the rogue just absolutely crushing everything in here. It's not even a chance for anything to spawn too out of hand. Usually these spiders apply a ton of poison dots, capping at five stacks on the tank. It's a ton of damage. There's orbs that you have to dodge, but, I mean, they just melted before anything became out of hand. Yeah, it, it looked like we actually saw cooldowns coming in from the boomkin there as well so they, they were just really investing all of their damage trying to make sure that they got past that very quickly and they're they're just about done with their trash as well i i think a big thing to note is with raider io now after they've kind of moved forward after that second boss all of a sudden they kind of look like the team we, we expect them to be they're looking a, a lot more confident and, and their pulls are just much cleaner yeah i i totally agree i mean after the second boss it's this is the team that we saw recently in the semifinals. they're comfortable they're 
other big pulls. They AoE grip everything. They cleave it down. Super, super huge amounts of AoE damage. So this is the kind of team that we're used to. They look like they really cleaned it up. And it shows. I mean, Team Big Pull's only now starting on the... Uh, uh, actually, it hasn't even started Thrashbite. Yeah, They're just the killing. Mini yeah, that's the last mini boss, Gazer Eggs, before the, uh, the Thrashbite himself. Meanwhile, we're already on the third boss, Domatrax. I, I cannot imagine a sin like the scenario of throws that you would need as Raider IO right now for Team Big Pull to catch up. I, I think the main thing is, is if there was a wipe, the run back could be a little bit long. It is pretty still, punishing. It, it's in the second boss's room, but I don't see that happening. Not in a not in a non-tyrannical setting. Exactly. This boss, of course, Domatrax has a few abilities that we need to watch out for. At 90 and 50 percent health, he will spawn two portals with small portal guardians. That until they're killed, those portals will remain intact and keep spawning mobs into the middle of this arena. So those need to be killed off immediately. Also, when he reaches 100 percent energy, he will cast a massive AOE. If you're caught in that, unless you're the tank you will likely get one shot which is why you need to hide as you can see here in that middle shield area to immune it yeah and, and you can't just hang out in that shielded area either it is going to really mitigate a, a lot of the damage that you put out it and uh, it shrinks as well when you are inside of it otherwise you probably see all the players just standing in there damage relaxing <laughs> so what's important is that the mobs that spawn from the second set of portals are actually a, a lot more dangerous, these mistresses, because they do an AoE cleave that, cleave that punts everyone out. So if you leave these up too long and they combine their AoE punt with the fact that the boss is doing his large AoE ability, well, if the tank runs into that central area and one of the mistresses is there, they're going to punt everyone out of the middle and wipe them. Fortunately, they do CC the one that's still up. They run in safely, and now they're back on the boss, who does soften Rage at 25%, increasing his tank damage. Yeah, in an ideal world, you really want to be able to dip in and out of that shield as much as possible. You don't want to be hanging out in there too long. But on the other end, we are going to see Team Big Pull has managed to get down Thrash Bite. So now they can make their way up, and uh, they still do. Uh, they actually have a pretty good percentage of trash done already. So they want to just try to get through as quick as possible. This is really messy. Yeah, so they, so they didn't do the LOS trick that Ooh. Oh, yeah, like that's going to cost them as go. well. That's another three deaths on the board for them. Oh, they should have just pulled them outside the room. They spawned way too many orbs with all those uh, superfluous ads that run out of the room. So many orbs to handle, and I mean, just finish them off. It was a really explosive situation. I thought that maybe they were trying to do something a little bit cute there and uh, maybe try to, like, get past them because they felt like they had enough percentage. But, uh, no, they, they, they just went straight for it, and it did not work out well at all. Now we are going to see Raider IO has their 100% of their trash. Now they only need to get down the last boss. Mephistroth it is. Um, so, of course, two-phase fight. We're going to start the first phase with a lot of debuffs and dots going out on the raid. Debuffs including pillar spawns. You'll see giant green circles that players need to move out of. And he does have a pretty nasty tank frontal, which will need to be pointed into the wall to make sure that they don't lose out too much real estate because it does leave some poop on the ground. So you want to make sure we're not stepping in that. And then, of course, eventually at 100 energy, he will phase to phase two, where the tank usually will pick up that shield and try to defend Illidan in the middle of the room. Yeah, and now it's just, what's Team Big Pull going to do here to try to catch up? I think they're going to do a big pull. Yeah, I think that's probably the only thing that they can do. I, I think that they do need to go for a big pull right now. We're going to see Raider.io getting some serious damage into this last boss already. Uh, he should be going into that intermission phase pretty soon. Yep, in just a moment. There it is, Shadow Fade. So it's important to note here is that there's going to be kind of uh, shadow figures of Mephistroth manifesting themselves around the outside of the room that shoot these purple balls at Illidan in the middle. Should one of the balls hit him, it actually increases the duration of this phase, which has an increasing damage over time effect, and of course slows you down because you're not able to damage the boss himself. Yeah, yeah, we can see right now the tank is going to use that shield to try to block them as the DPS try to get as much damage out onto these adds as possible. Defense. Okay, so it looks good, no problem. Looks like she should be going through momentarily here. It is the DPS responsibility to kill the adds around the outside to make sure that it's not too difficult for the tank to absorb all those hits. Of course, if you have two of those balls coming in from 180 degree angles at the, at the exact same moment, it gets quite tricky. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do like that that little like the, the trick spin and try to hit both of them. The old uh, one-two step. Yeah, yeah. Been, been there before the one time I tanked this and I already told you it was with a pug and yeah, not paying much attention. But oh, I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are going to see only 25% left on this boss and big pull just making their way up the staircase now. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a dominant performance. I mean, uh, leading up to the second boss, both teams were kind of sloppy. Lots of wipes before the first boss. I'm not going to lie, they both boss. looked pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, it was really sloppy. But then, I mean, Raider.io just turned it completely around after and including the second boss. And, I mean, just a dominant victory here to get them the 1-0. Yeah, Raider.io, you know, initially kind of came in and they were like, ah, I think we'll just kind of oh, phone Jesus. it in. And like, you know what? We're actually really good at the video game. Pride. What if, what if we just won the video game? And uh, to be fair, Big Pole didn't really make it that difficult for him. You can tell Big Pole like either doesn't do a lot of Cathedral of Eternal Night or uh, something wasn't working because this is just not even close. Well, this is also a key that is very weird, right? So it, even if you've done a lot of Cathedral,